Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Hey Joe, Two in Love, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, as my second episode of the podcast, I'm here for your AW Dynamite review for June 24, 2020. Happened last night. Pretty good show. Uh, thank you all for joining me. So. For those who have not followed me or those who have or listened to me or watched me for the first time, hello. Um, I am a Joe Two in Love. Um, I'm a pop and I do a podcast uh, Monday, th- Thursday, and Friday. I do sports topics and uh, pro wrestling reviews uh, throughout the week and and for those who have followed me and those who have listened to me, welcome back. And I am here for your AW review uh, for from last night. Now, again, for uh, if you're watching me for the first time and you're or listening to me for the first time and you're a pro wrestling fan. Uh, Yes, AW and NXT are both on Wednesday, uh, but what I do is I watch AW first, and then I record NXT uh, for later, and I'll watch it after, and I review AW Thursday, which is today, and then I review NXT on Friday tomorrow. So if you're a pro wrestling fan or just a fan of my podcast in general, you'll get that tomorrow. So there you go. Now, before I get into review, there are two uh, little topics uh, I want to talk about. First is, well, so the, C- the COVID... A uh, virus has hit, or pandemic has hit um, AW and 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 a and excuse me, yeah, WWE uh, recently, and so my thoughts and prayers are with Ne Young, uh, Caleb Braxton, and. WWE producer of WWE, as well as, of course, AW World Champion John Moxley, um, who is the husband of Renee Young, who is in WWE. Um, of course, want to be safe and hope everyone uh, gets through this and comes out healthy. So there's that. And the second thing I want to talk about was, so the past couple weeks there has been a bunch of cases or a bunch of accusations as far as pro wrestlers go, whether it be NXT, WWE, um, AEW, and this was about on the show tonight. Um. This is Coke, by the way, if you're wondering, uh, Coca-Cola. But um, I just hope everyone's um, being safe and being uh, mature about what they're all doing. And uh, yeah, because based on the accusations, Sammy Guevara for... AEW, he was supposed to go one one with uh, Matt Hardy tonight, but that was scratched because he was suspended. And instead, it was Santana, the inner circle, facing Matt Hardy tonight. So it was okay, but I mean, it's so and so. So now, getting to review, um, it was the. Uh, 
Golem show for Firefest, which is next week, uh, the first day of Firefest. Night one is next week, and night two is the following week of Firefest. Um, good Golem show for AEW. I got my notes right here next next with me. So if you see me looking that way, my notes are set up right here. So yeah. But I'm getting to show, so to show start off uh, with a uh, pretty, uh, I would say, solid. Now my notes are falling. But um, it was a pretty good show. Uh, start off with Wardlow and Luchasaurus, a Lumberjack match. Now, Lumberjack matches, give or take, um, of course, where you have many superstars around the ring, and I mean it's kind of chaotic. The um, match has been brewing for weeks, uh, especially for last week. Uh, of course, Warlow is MJF heavy, and MJ and Luchasaurus is the big guy in. The Jurassic Express. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, it was pretty chaotic. Um, most of the lumberjacks got involved. Um, they were fighting outside the ring. There, were, there was a spot where uh, Luchasaurus he did a Shunzar press uh, from the ramp or the sage area onto all the lumberjacks outside which looked I mean in hindsight it looked good but at the same time uh, with everyone standing out it just looked odd and then uh, then well which uh, source he uh, hit a choke some on Warlow but MJF distracted the referee and uh, Jungle Boy, who is also one of the Lumberjacks, he speared uh, MJF, who was on the ap ring apron, onto the outside, uh, took him out, and then while the referee was distracted, Wardlow hit a Lobo on. Luchasaurus, and then followed up with the F10 with uh, for the victory. I mean, most of the match was Wardlow uh, being up um, Luchasaurus, uh, so that was part of it. I mean, going to the match, Wardlow, he was, of course, the more book guy, the more... Uh, active guy, the more the guy with the most momentum. So I mean, I mean, more not Jurassic Express, but Luchasaurus has been kind of on ice lately. Um, yes, he was in that poker chip uh, casino lab match at double or nothing, but. Not really doing much since. Um, afterwards, there was a big brawl. And then uh, they announced that on night one, it will be MJF and Wardlow. First Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Should be interesting. Um, I had a feeling that match was going to be made. Uh, but... Because, I mean, two nights of Fighter Fest, so you got to make more matches. And I had a feeling tonight they were going to um, talk about more matches, build more uh, ammo for the show, more matches. And they did. So, enough that... Uh, 
There was a quick little vignette of Brian Cage uh, narrated by Taz. Um, talking about him, talking about his uh, approach, talking about his finisher, the drill claw. Basically, um, they're continuing the hype, obviously, for Brian Cage versus Sean Moxley. Uh, because Moxley wasn't there, obviously, due to uh, pandemic reasons. Um Nonetheless, since I'm I'm trying to be uh, excited for the world title match between Moxley and Cage for Firefest, but I mean Cage. I mean, he just showed up. He hasn't really been anybody. Uh, if you take out the casino ladder match, all he faces a few jobbers, as we saw tonight. Uh, that's really much it. And aside from some confrontations with Moxley and then the attack a couple weeks ago on Moxley outside uh, in the parking lot, not really much to go off of. For the match, but it was good. Next up was a short match between uh, Carl Shia, the women's champion, and uh, Red Velvet. This was quick. Um, excuse me. Um, Shia, well. Penelope Ford, who she's defending the title against at Fighter Fest. She was with Kip Sabian in the crowd um, of the certain superstars. And uh, she uh, confronted uh, Sheeta before the match. They were talking trash short. So then uh, this fired up Sheeta. And uh, Sheeta... She was quick with the match, um, just a uh, running knee, and then uh, Falcon Arrow for the win uh, for Sheeta. Afterwards, there was a little bit of a back and forth with uh, Sheeta and Penelope Ford. Um, they were being held back by Sabian and... Uh, He lost the lens, which looked kind of funny, but I mean, Penelope Ford, uh, obviously they have to sell the match, uh, but Penelope Ford, she's been kind of getting the front short of the stick. Yes, she beat uh, Sheeta in a tag team match a couple weeks ago, but... Other than that, she hasn't really done much. And if you look at the rankings, I think she's number three behind Nala Rose and Chris Satlander, last I checked. Of course, Satlander is out with her injury, and Nala Rose uh, apparently will be wrestling at Fighter Fest. But still, Penelope... Um, Realistically, they were going for Britt Baker and Shia, but of course, Britt Baker's out with that injury until, like she said, Fighter Fest. So, pretty much a one off opponent for Shia until we get two all out with, in September, but still was okay. They wouldn't need to do. Afterwards, there was a press conference between Cody and Jake Hager f or for their match at Fighter Fest, which will take place for Team T title. This was interesting because A, Cody, well, for the first time, 
he didn't defend the TNT title. Excuse me. Because he said he was going to defend it every week. But then they made um, a match for Firefest last week, which, I mean, I guess kind of makes sense because, well, they wanted Cody to ease up and, well, the ending would have been predictable. Say Cody defending against who? Because last week he faced Ricky Sarks, but you kind of knew uh, that Cody was going to win, considering he's lined up to face Hager for Fight Fest. So it started out Cody. With Brandy, with uh, Dustin, with Arm, uh, I believe Ali was there. They were all on one side of the press conference table. And then the other side was empty because Hager didn't show up uh, until later. So um, Arn was asked the question. You know, was he surprised on Hager's absence? Saying he wasn't really surprised as a word. Uh, said um, Cody, um, he didn't think, or Arn didn't think Hager was ready for a tall shot. And then he saw the fire in Cody's eyes and uh, both kind of agreed on the match. And then Cody was talking about how, well, he's asked a question and he talked about how the tile's not complete. And now Cody takes pride as to be the champion, the first TNT champion. And then while Cody would continue talking, uh, at the end, Hager and his wife showed up to the press conference. And then uh, both did stare down um, with the tile being shown up above. And then both um, kind of looked kind of well, like an MMA type of uh, way and feel, you know, when uh, our press coverage or face off, when they both look at to the camera. So, he's, and then uh, Hager made the gesture, um, put his fist up to Cody's face, and uh, Cody uh, smacks uh, Hager's f- fist away from his face, and then they both kind of got close, but then they got separated. And then uh, Jake Hager's wife, um, I think it was Water, um, they had these little wine glasses um, out, and uh, Hager's wife threw whatever this, um, I assume it was water, and Cody's face, and then uh, that was pretty much how it ended. Uh, Co- Cody was backed away by Dustin, his brother, and uh, that was basically how it ended. And then uh, uh, Hager's wife left, and this is cool. Um, obviously, he needed what did what he needed to do. Um, I liked how Hager did show up till the end, mostly because um, we've seen in. Hager's video packages and promos, especially leading up to the match against Moxley, that Hager needs to work on his promo work and basically his delivery. And uh, 
Cody, he knows how to build a story. Um, so, uh, I guess built on Hager's character as well. So, it worked. Uh, I would like to see a press conference or something more better, you know, like the EW World title. But, it's what I need to do, and I liked it for what it was. Next was kind of the low point of the show for me. Rowdy Lee and Cole Cabana for Sunny Kiss and Joey Janela. Now, I mean, a couple weeks ago we got a vignette on Joey Janela and we were all kind of curious where his direction was going to go. And, and you saw on Dark uh, last week and last night, or Tuesday night, that Joey Janela, um, they're trying to put him, or I think they just think that's, the best way for him, which I'll get in the, a tag team with Sunny Kiss. I mean, I love Brody Lee and I love Cabana and obviously I love Jana. But of course, um, the tag team division, well, I like Jana. I wish she would. I think he's underrated and I think he should be a contender for the TNT title. However, he's kind of been lost in the shuffle. And, well, I mean, a tag team between Psychis and Joey Janela, the tag team division is so stacked right now that, <coughs> excuse me, Bringing in any tag team that you don't think is going to be pushed a big portion. I mean, why have to bring another tag team? Now, I get it, the uh, Brody Lee and Cole Cabana side because obviously they wanted to get a win. For the both of them. So that way. Cabana. Well. Coming to the end of the match. Um, there was a. To finish the match. Brody Lee hit a discus lariat. On Janela. In the middle of the ring. And then. Uh, offered up the pin. To. Cole Cabana. So Cabana. Back to its winning ways, and basically, Brody Lee's way of saying that will help you win again, and more a persuasive way of him joining the Dark Order. So, I like that aspect of it. I just, I don't see why they would make a tag team of joint. Janela and Sun Kiss. Considering, well, both of them have been mostly on Dark and A Dub Dark, and neither has been pushed prominently. So putting them together, I don't think, would be a wise idea. Nonetheless, uh, did what did primary push the narrative for Cabana and Brody Lee as it pertains to the Dark Order. Did what did. So for that, I'm okay. I just didn't really uh, enjoy the match. Is all. Next, uh, speaking of Dark, AW Dark, they did a recap of 
Sean Spears win over Pineapple Pete uh, Tuesday night on Dark. Um, I like... I mean, it seems with the glove that Tully Blanchard gave Spears has been a sign of more seriousness and Obviously, I like, of course, they're paying more attention in the dark, which is a good thing. I heard a couple of mentions of AEW Dark during the show. So for that, I like because, well, these matches uh, have to mean something as well, considering they mean towards superstars' records or wrestlers' records. Excuse me. Next was easily the match of the night for me. FTR versus SCU. This was really fun. Uh, SCU, of course, is a skilled tag team. They were, well, the combination of Scorpio Sky and... uh, Frankie Kazarian, of course, were the first ever tag team champions. So this was Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels. Of course, they're a well-seasoned tag team. They know how to work. FTR, of course, they've been coming in. And this show that they're here to say and the tag team division is just on a roll right now. As I said, was a competitive match. Uh, Dax Harwood of FTR, he suplexed Kaz on Daniels and then did a slingshot suplex for a two count. Um, there was a pair of dueling cradles uh, f- for a two count. And uh, there was a nice little combination by SCU. Was a uh, backstabber and Zagari on prior combination uh, for two count. Uh, there was a double team lay drop, uh, basically, um, where it's almost like a spine buster position. The uh, one of the partners has in the ring, and nonetheless, it was two count. Uh, there was a super X counter uh, by Daniels. Um, they went for the spot FTR when they go for a super flex and then an elbow drop or a frog slash, whichever you want to call it. So Daniels, uh, he countered, uh, I believe it was Cash Wheeler, after super X into an inside cradle for a two. And then uh, I believe it was Dax Harwood. He was throttled up on the ropes or the turnbuckle by Kazarian, which was a nice spot. There was a double team powerbomb by combination by SCU for two count. Uh, Daniels hit Angel's wings. Uh, and then um, the Good Night Express from uh, FTR to Daniels uh, for the win. Or the Shower Machine, if you followed them, and WB, that's what they're calling it, the Good Night Express. Uh, afterwards, uh, they were. Excuse me. They were um, the uh, truck they drove into the arena. The butcher and the blade were in. Uh, they pretty much hijacked their truck, and then uh, they were. 
talking about challenging FTR and the Young Bucks to a match at Fighter Fest, an eight man tag team match. And the Butcher and the Blades partners, uh, they showed up right behind uh, the uh, FTR. And what a return, uh, the Lucha Brothers, what a sight. The Lucha Brothers um, now facing, uh, well, the Lucha Brothers and the Butcher and Blade facing FTR and the Young Bucks on night two. Should be fun. And a man tag. Um, interesting. I'm glad to see Pentagon back. And Phoenix. Um, they really add to tag team division. Um. In my opinion, they're prior to FTR arriving, they were my favorite tag team in the tag team division. But obviously, due to restrictions, uh, they haven't been there. But still, interesting to see them back. So we go from that uh, to a promo package uh, for the tag team title match with uh, for Firefest between the best friends and excuse me uh, the best friends and Hangman Omega, which I assume will be the main event of night one next week. Should be interesting. Um, they talked about how Hey Man Omega talked about how they're not best friends and uh, how so they can kick each other's ass and there was also um, talks of Taz chimed in Excalibur chimed in Tony Schiavone chimed in it was interesting. Um, they would need to. Um, best friends talked, said they won't let this opportunity go to waste and talked about how they've been on a roll. And K Meg talked about how just like that, be, they became tag team champions. Just like that, they became... Um, they had the best tag team match ever against the Young Bucks, just like that. And they all talked talk about if they want to beat the best friends, they can do it just like that. So I liked it for what it was. Um, can't wait to see the match. Um, like, like just said, best friends have been on a roll. Um, they have earned the number one contender spot in the tag team division. Hangman Omega, of course, two of the best ever do it. And I can't wait to see it next week. So we go from that to a quick match. Brian Cage versus John Cruz, I believe. This is quick. Uh, Taz was a commentary. Uh, Taz is always good on commentary. Um, but I mean, it was quick. Drew a claw for the win by Cage. Afterwards, uh, he and Taz uh, mocked Moxley, who was at home. Uh, talked about uh, and basically asked Moxley, can you stop the path of Cage? I like, I'm intrigued by the match. I'm just not sold on it being a one-time match. Now, when or how 
do they go about the finish is the ultimate question. Because Moxley can't lose. Brian Cage, um, of course, just bursts on the scene. He's got to lose, but he can't lose clean. So Darby Allen, who was on the show tonight, we'll see how he factors in. I assume he will into the finish of the match. So, I mean, we'll see how it goes down on night two. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> I just had lunch, so... We got a burpee, so excuse me for that. Next up, they show Broly Lee and Cole Cabana next backstage. Um... Uh, Brody Lee talked about how he helped Cabana back winning again. And uh, they challenged SCU for the match at Fighter Fest. Should be interesting. Uh, they confirmed it later in the show. And I can't wait. Should be interesting. Um, Brody Lee. Um, Cole Cabana. Would he work in the Dark Order? Maybe. I'm still not sold, but if it happens, uh, would give him more direction, I feel. Because he's always been that uh, colorful kind of personality type of guy. But, I mean, at, with the Dark Order, it would have to be a more darker type of feel. Uh more serious because he's always been kind of jokester, kind of goofy. So we'll see. Next up, like I said, Santana first Matt Hardy. This was supposed to be Sammy Guevara first Matt Hardy. This was supposed, but since Sammy's suspended, um, it's now Santana. First Mallory. This was okay. Uh, solid match. Uh, Matt came out as Damascus. Uh, coming to the end of the match, um, Matt Hardy hit a, or Santana hit almost like a Phantom Driver. And, uh, he rolled up Matt Hardy by in a weird way, and then Matt Hardy countered uh, and beat Santana with the victory roll. So it was good. Um, did what it needed to do. Um, afterwards, uh, Santana Ortiz, who was out there, uh, hit the street sweeper on. Matt and uh, Private Party came out to say uh, Matt um, and apparently they also confirmed uh, Private Party will face Santana Ortiz proud and powerful night one for the For Fighter Fest, so should be interesting as well. The tag team division is stacked. That's what I was saying. Next up, uh, last but not least, the closing segment between Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho. This fun um, building towards their match at Fighter Fest. I've been. As the weeks go by, I've been more intrigued about a match between these two. So they both came out. Uh, Jericho asked, why does the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? He said that a few times, and he talked about how Cassie, or talked about the joke after a while, it sounds dull and boring. And he compared that to how Orange Cassie is to him. 
that the more he sees on chassis, um, the more he becomes dull and boring to him and actually pisses Jericho off due to, obviously, his sloth like his gimmick. So then after that, um, Jericho talked about how he called the management of AEW, the Young Bucks, Tony Khan, Cody, after they signed the Orange Cassie and asked why they signed him. And uh, they all said, well, because Orange Cassie is exciting. So um, Jericho sort of praised him for that and talked about how He'll have to put his hands out of his pockets and grab out a miracle because that's what it will take to beat Jericho. And that will probably not happen. So after Jericho, or excuse me, Cassie, he took the mic from Jericho and... It looked like he was going to say something, but he didn't. He dropped the mic, uh, did his thing, and uh, he took down Jericho, a uh, weld on him, and they started brawling uh, from the outside of the ring uh, to the sands where some of the crowd is, and uh, they crawled on the other side of the arena. And then at the end of it, somehow Orange Cassie's right ear started bleeding. I don't know how that happened. But at the end of it, uh, Orange Cassie, he hit Superman punch to Jericho and Jericho landed in uh, on a tape through a table and Orange Cassie uh, posed on top of the I assume a uh, production crate and that's how the show went off the air so pretty good ending uh, I liked it um, building towards Fire Fest so for Fire Fest what we got uh, for night one I believe they said was Nala Rose uh, in action. Three town matches. Uh, Cody for Jake Hager. Best friends for Hangman and Omega. Sheeta versus Penelope Ford. Uh, MJF and Wardlow versus Jurassic Express. And I believe. Um, afterwards is or also SCU versus Colt Cabana Brodily. So that's night one. So for night two, they got because after the tag team match earlier, uh, Lance Archer he tagged Joey Janela and Sunny Kiss. So it'll be Lance Archer for Sunny Kiss. Interesting. The eight man tag team match between uh, Best or Young Bucks, FTR, Butcher and Blade, and Lucha Brothers. The world title match, obviously, Orange Cassie versus um, Jericho. And I believe that's it. For night two. So. In total it should be. Interesting way. For Fire Fest. I can't wait. It was a solid show. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you're new. Uh, like and subscribe. On the video. And. Thank you all. And. I'll be back. Uh, tomorrow. With your NXT review. And then Monday I'll be back with. 
some sports topics to, uh, discussing in the sports world, uh, including MLB's return. Uh, everybody, we're getting sports back little by little, so uh, we're getting there. I'll be safe, and I'll be back. Thank you all.